How many of you have heard the term NFT? Is it a scam? Can it make you rich? Are you breaking the law from owning one? Well, in this lesson, you're going to learn exactly what you need to know about NFTs and what's the most recent policy that the SEC, which is the Security Exchange Commission, feels on these NFT thingies. Are you ready for mission number two? Okay, so at the end of this video, I want you to visit ProFightsNFT.com and I want you to go through the entire website and really understand the utility of the Profites NFT that we're going to discuss later on in this video. Now, when you go to it, I want you to be able to generate your own NFT. So we built a self-generating system that allows you to customize your own Profites NFT. And when you customize the one that fits your personality, I want you to go ahead and grab it and I want you to tag us at Profites app on Instagram so that we can post your personalized NFT. Now, what does NFT mean? NFT is an acronym for non-fungible token. So before I go into the textbook explanation and go over the SEC paperwork, let's see if I can explain this in a way that's relatable to the divine non-members. First, let's classify fungible. Fungible is a commodity or product that could be exchanged for the same or equal value. So let's say you're an active member in your organization and you really care about building divine non economics. When you pay your national dues, there's a dollar amount attached to that dues. So let's say on average, national dues cost about $300 a year. And now let's say Profites app allows you to bump for your LB or LS and pay it forward by paying their national dues for them. Okay, so if you gift your LB or LS, Let's say a special code that when they enter it in the system, it pays their national dues at the value of $300. That special code is now considered fungible because they can use that code to pay their national dues at that exact same value, even exchange. So non-fungible is when you buy or are gifted, let's say the official document of your organization's mission statement. And now let's say you're at Nationals and Nationals is auctioning this mission statement to the highest bidder. Now, how do you determine the value of this national, like this monument? How do you determine the value of this? You don't. The person that bids the highest for this official mission statement determines the new price. Similar to a Basquiat or any type of art, making it non-fungible. Now, how do we get from fungible to non-fungible in the crypto space? One word, token. Now, if you didn't watch my previous video, go watch it because I break down all the different important terms you need to know. But simply put, a crypto token represents something that you own like an asset or a deed. So NFT is non-fungible token. Some NFT fun facts. NFTs have been around since 2014. NFTs are gaining notoriety now because they are becoming an increasingly popular way to buy and sell digital artwork. The market for NFTs was worth a staggering $41 billion in 2021 alone, an amount that is approaching the total value of the entire global fine arts market. NFTs are also generally one of a kind, or at least one of a very limited run and have unique identifying codes. Anyone can view the individual images or even the entire collage of images online for free. Thousands of NFT sales worth millions of dollars in total value are traded each day. NFTs allows the buyer to own the original item. Not only that, it contains built-in authentication, which serves as proof of ownership. Each NFT has a digital signature that makes it impossible for NFTs to be exchanged for or equal to one another, hence non-fungible. So now that you understand all that, what does the SEC slash Security Exchange Commission says about all this? Now, as a ProFights economic educator, I did some deep research as to why these NFTs are even considered illegal and a scam if it's revolutionizing the industry. So I went directly to the source. I went to the SEC.gov. The U.S. Security Exchange Commission, or SEC, is an independent agency of the United States federal government. Now, they were created during the Wall Street crash in 1929, and their primary purpose is to protect against market manipulation. So if you understand that, and then we do a deep dive as to kind of why they're 
involved with this crypto space, which is unregulated, they're trying to avoid market manipulation. Gerbier S. Grewal, Director of the SEC's Division of Enforcement. The bolstered crypto assets and cyber unit will be at the forefront of protecting investors and ensuring fair and orderly markets in the face of these critical challenges. Now, after reading everything about what's classified as a security in the crypto space, it led me to the cybersecurity enforcement page on the SEC website. And I saw hundreds of lawsuits the SEC filed against crypto-based companies. Now, what's the grounds and what's the basis on their lawsuits against companies in an industry that's not even regulated? Well, that led me to the whitehouse.gov forward slash crypto page. And the first thing you see is the fact sheet, the climate and energy implications of crypto assets in the United States. If you've been paying attention, you see that the government is going real heavy on climate change. I'm just gonna take y'all directly to the website and we're just gonna see exactly what they have to say. Let's take a look. The use of digital assets based on distributed ledger technology, DLT, is expanding. Digital assets are a form of value represented digitally. As an emerging technological innovation, digital assets have provided some benefits and value for some residents and businesses in the United States and have the potential for future benefits with emerging uses. United States has an interest in ensuring that digital asset technologies and digital payment ecosystems are developed, designed, and implemented in a responsible manner that reduces negative climate impacts and environmental pollution, as may result from some cryptocurrency mining. The total number of on-chain crypto asset transactions is currently small compared to those of traditional financial services. In 2020, Bitcoin and Ethereum together accounted for roughly 460 million reported on-chain transactions, 8,485. That same year, Visa, MasterCard, and American Express collectively processed an estimated 310 billion credit card payment transactions. So as you just saw, the information on that page is very detailed yet very vague because remember, their objective is to prevent market manipulation. So my personal interpretation on this is they're trying to figure out a way to control and protect the retail investor, which is the everyday investor, from losing their money while also trying to protect the crypto-based companies from making too much money without having a proof of concept. Because within this unregulated space, there are a lot of people that are just launching companies without an actual proof of concept. So if you end up raising all these money, so a lot of the lawsuits that's happening, these companies have raised millions, sometimes billions of dollars that's all going in the unregulated space. And it's like the Security Exchange Commission is like, yo, Where's my cut? So as you can see from the website, the SEC and the government is welcome in this space. You can buy, you can sell, you can trade within the ecosystem up to a certain point. That's where it gets tricky. You can do it, but you have to understand the parameters against what you're doing. You can't just go out and spend all this money within this space and not expect the IRS to say, hey, where did that money come from? Or you can't expect to make all this money from that and say, hey, is that a security? Because you're using that to make more money. So you need to go ahead and register that. So because it's unregulated, it's a very gray area. And any company that blows past that gray area is getting hit with a lawsuit. See, we're pro <laughs> educators. We're not getting hit with a lawsuit because we're following exactly what the SEC regulation is. So now that you know that, let's talk about how you can actually buy an NFT. How does an NFT work? NFTs. Non-fungible tokens exist on a blockchain, which is a distributed public ledger that records transactions. 
Remember, blockchain is the underlying process that makes cryptocurrencies and NFT possible. Specifically, NFTs are typically held on the Ethereum blockchain, although other blockchains support them as well. An NFT is created or minted from digital objects that represent both tangible and intangible items on the blockchain, including graphic art, GIFs, videos and sports highlights, collectibles, virtual avatars and video game skins, designer sneakers, music, documents, and more. NFTs are like physical collector's items, only digital. So instead of getting an actual oil painting to hang on the wall, the buyer gets a digital authenticated file instead. NFTs also grant exclusive ownership rights. NFTs can have only one owner at a time, and their use of blockchain technology makes it easy to verify ownership and transfer tokens between owners. The creator can also store specific information in an NFT's metadata. For instance, artists can sign their artwork by including their signature in the file. As you can see, NFTs will be used to authenticate ownership in many industries and help in preventing fraud and creating transparency. So now that you know more about NFTs than majority of the world, it's very important that you do a deep dive into each company because some people are selling NFTs because it's their creative passion, some people are selling their music, and they're just really building that ecosystem. But before you buy an NFT thinking you're gonna get rich, you really have to understand what is the purpose? Like, why are you buying this and what are you trying to get rich from? Just because someone else got rich from it and probably lost a lot of money doesn't mean it's gonna happen for you. And a lot of people that are putting in real money are probably institutional investors, which means they can spend up to that dollar amount. How can you get involved today? Well, we actually built our own NFT collection. It's live, you can buy it, you can mint it, it can be yours. However, you have to be a Divine Nine member. You have to be a verified Divine Nine member on Profites app. So you're probably gonna see a whole bunch of NFTs right here. So these are the Profites NFTs, right? And what's cool about these Profites NFTs is you can actually customize the NFT that you want that we're gonna mint on the Ethereum blockchain. Another thing that's cool about these NFTs is the utility. We actually have utility. And that's one thing we didn't actually discuss within the NFT. Now, a lot of NFT projects, they, you throw out the word utility, utility, utility. What that means is, what is the use case of this NFT? If I buy this NFT, am I buying it as an art piece that I just have within my wallet? Am I buying it because it's gonna give me some kind of points? Is it gonna give me access to some, some events and stuff like that? Those are all the utility aspects of an NFT. So when you go to ProfitesNFT.com, we have a list of our utilities, but I'm gonna just name just my favorite one so you can understand. So with these Profite NFTs, we're gonna donate 50% of the proceeds to the Profites Divine Nine ecosystem because we're establishing a DAO. Now, if you went to my previous video, I explained what a DAO is, but I'm gonna have a very unique video just for it on DAO and how we kind of built it within our ecosystem. Now, a DAO, again, is a decentralized autonomous organization, which pretty much means anybody that falls within that DAO structure gets a vote. And anything that falls within that DAO structure can't be changed because it's linked to a smart contract. So everybody that buys a Profice NFT will be issued one vote within that DAO and that 50% that we're putting within the ecosystem, majority of that is gonna be used to issue grants to our Divine Non-Members. And these are only for Divine Non-Members. And now listen, if you're not a Divine Non-Member, you can still download Profites app and be a supporter and help us grow the ecosystem. And then you can try to join later as an alumni chapter, join, get active, be involved. But for the Profites members, it's really time for you to get activated because you can buy one today. It's valued at $1,000 and you can customize it yourself. So go to the ProfiteNFT.com, see what we did, see how we structured everything. And y'all, I mean, y'all see it. It looks, it looks really good. So I, I highly recommend if you're a Profites member, get verified on Profites app and purchase your Profites NFT because we're going to do a lot of things with these NFTs that's going to really build our economics up. Group economics. This is a, this is group economics personified and we're calling it divine non-economics because we already have an ecosystem. We already have an existing user base. We have a built-in KYC, which is know your customer within the app, which means everybody that purchases these NFTs before we mint it on the blockchain, we're going to verify who you are and make sure you are in fact a Profites member. And then we're going to have it stamped and we're going to have all thousand of the Profites members on the webpage for everybody to see who these profite members are. Now, if you have the disposable income, 
go ahead and purchase one. If you don't, it's okay. Talk to your chapter. Maybe a chapter can get together and say, hey, as a chapter, let's purchase this NFT. And then when we have a grant application, we can vote together as a chapter on where the money goes. Or if we have a chapter and you say, hey, we need the money for this, what we're doing, you can go ahead and submit because it's going to be the grants. The grants are going to be issued on a first come, first serve basis. So everybody, the based off when you purchase the NFT, like Meta, AKA one, Meta Alpha one, Meta Kappa one, Meta Omega one, all the way up to Meta Omega uh, 1000, right? From one to 1000, that's when you'll be able to submit your application. And once we get all the, uh, the NFT sold, we'll structure it into a DAO, which will allow us to actually vote on these grants. So y'all, it's time to galvanize, it's time to get together. Let's really build this group economics called Divine Non Economics and purchase your Profiles NFT today. It's legit, it's regulated, and we can do it. ProFights United. My name is Eric Lee Usher, and I'm the founder of ProFights App. Our vision is to unite members and supporters of the Divine Nine organizations. At ProFights, we built a self-sustaining revenue model that puts money back into the Divine Nine ecosystem, allowing us to support education, financial literacy, and community development. It's important that you get active today. Download ProFights right now. ProFights.com.